right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And as part of the AWD 1111 class for the fall 2020 semester at Rankin, I've been doing a series of video presentations based on the textbook we're using for that class. The textbook being Get Programming with Node.js by Jonathan Wexler, a Manning publication. So far, um, the book contains eight lessons in like 37 chapters, and I'm sorry, eight units in 37 lessons. So I'm on lesson five right now. All right, so as they mentioned here in lesson four, we were introduced to how to create a simple web server using Node.js. As mentioned here, every time a user visits a URL that leads to the application, they're making an HTTP or a hypertext transfer protocol or an HTTPS request. Now each request must be processed by the code you write if you want something meaningful to happen. I mean, you, it, you know, if you want to, to just constantly get no file found error or whatever, I guess you could do very little to nothing. But in this lesson, as it says, we learn how to gather and process some of the information in these requests this is also going to be the first time we start to look at in any depth at all the concept of application routes and that's code that we're going to add that is going to basically map up the request that we get with you know uh, giving back the appropriate response so we've got three different objectives here we want to be able to collect and process request data we want to be able to submit a post request using the curl command and finally we want to be able to build an application that has basic routes so they start the chapter by saying you know consider this that right now we're making some progress we're almost 50 pages into a book and you know we've set up a web server the problem is right now that web server, that, server rather that we built only responds with a single line of HTML that we put in uh, hello universe or whatever it happens to be or this is the line that should print or whatever that's not typically what you're going to want typically you're going to want as it says to show a complete home page a contact page an about us page whatever it happens to be so as mentioned here Every web application uses routes alongside its web server to ensure that users get to see specifically what they've requested. With Node.js, you can define these routes in a few steps as any conditional block. In other words, if they entered in a request to go to the home page, we should route them to the home page. Else, if they sent in a request that goes to a contact page, we should go to a contact page. Else, if they entered in a request to an about page, we go to an about page. And if we assume that's all three of the pages that we have, then we'd say, else, send them a 404 file not found error. All right? So what we're going to do as we start, as it says right here, is we want to rearrange the code from lesson four to get a better idea of how the server is behaving. So let's go in and I had done some work on this the other day and I'm not exactly even sure but I had some problems with it so I'm gonna take this whole thing that I had from lesson five I'm gonna remove it of course it says I can't because it's open in something that's okay alright I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to grab the main.js. I've already got it over here it looks like. So that's good. So they tell us to actually come in here and create a folder that is called simple underscore server. Alright, I'm going to do that and I'm going to copy the main.js file to that as we start out here. I'm going to put that way over here so it's out of the way. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start up node alright so let's come in here and let's start up node and let's go in and do uh, 
and npm init. All right. And this is going to walk us through. In fact, I, I don't want to do this. Let me let me uh, can, cancel out of here. I want to do a CD first to second. It's not simple server. It's second server. I believe that's what they called it. Let me double check. Second server with its own project directory inside. So we're going to npm init in here. Okay, we've already got the main in there, so that's fine. So let's do a cd to second server. So we are, whoops, we are right here, right now. We are there. If we do an ls, you're going to see that we've got main.js, which is the same thing we have if we do this. Okay, so let's do an npm node package manager install. By default, it's going to want to. I don't want to do install. I want an init. I'm sorry. So npm init, and it's going to come in and it says well, do we want to call this second server. Fine. The versions one. The description. This code is for chapter chapter five of the Wexler test text rather. Entry point will be main.js, no test command, no git repository, no keywords, I'm the author. ISC is fine for the license, it's all okay. All right. So we've gone through and we've done all that, and you see that in here now we have our package.json file and our package underscore lock JSON. We're going to end up putting some more stuff in there in this particular chapter. All right, so oops, let's jump back here. All right, again, the author says in this and the following lessons, he expects you to initialize your own project. We just did that. All right, in your code, you have a server object that has a callback function. In fact, let's do this. Forget this stuff that's here. I'm going to get rid of that. So I'm going to go to my second server, right mouse click on it, and choose open with code. Okay, so you can see in here that I've got those three files. The one I want is my main JS file. This is the same one that I had in the last chapter. No changes have been made to it so far. So, we have a server that has a callback function which is run every time a request is made to the server. With your server running, if you visit localhost 3000 in your browser and refresh the page, that callback function is run twice, once on every refresh. Now, since I just went and brought that over, let's see what happens if we do this. So node main or main.js, it doesn't matter. It doesn't like our status codes here, so it says we may, in the book someplace, we may have to run that again. So where is that? I know I saw that. So it says we may need to run this again using npm, because it may have just, may not be there. So I'll, we'll do that first. So let's clear. Let's put that in. npm i http status codes minus save minus dev. All right, so that put that in. Now if I do another ls minus l, you'll notice I have my node modules folder right now. Okay, so let's clear again. And now let's try to run this. So node main. And it says it's up and running and it's listing on port 3000. So let's go over there and make sure that at least it is still working. So localhost colon 3000 hit enter. There's our hello universe. Again, I'm not sure exactly why we're getting that message. We are and it's fine. All right. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> so I'm going to, like I said, I'm just going to follow the steps that are in the chapter here. So let me jump back down. <clears throat> request REQ and RES represent the request and response from HTTP. You can use any variables you want here. In fact, in the last chapter, they had us use the words request and response. Here, they're going to cut them down to REQ and RES. Okay, upon receiving a request, the server passes a request and a response object to a function where you can run your code. As they mention here, another way to write the code for this server is shown in listing 5.1, which is on the bottom of page 50. We're going to do that in just a moment. All right? So, um, let's see. So that's the code. Let's try doing this. I don't even know if this will work or not, but I'm, I'm going to type it in. But for now, I want to copy this. I want to move back up on here. And I'm going to go and open up. There we go. So let me put this up in here. So. Another way to write this code is shown in 5.1, and I put it down here on the bottom. Okay? The server fires the code in a callback function when a request event is triggered. So there's the request event right there. So if the app has a request event, this is telling it to trigger this. All right? When a user visits the application's web page, the code within the braces runs. Then the server prepares a response by assigning a response code of 200 which I don't see but we'll find it. And defines the type content the 200 is right there, that's the OK. And defines the type of content in the response as HTML. That's right here. Lastly, the server sends the content within the parentheses and simultaneously closes the connection with the client. So that's the code that you see right here. What I'm going to try to do, just so you get an idea of what's going on here, I'm going to bring this up and let's see. File, open, lesson four, main. All right. <clears throat> Let me flip these. All right. And what I want to show you is this. I'm going to, well, I think I have to, yeah. Right mouse click on here and choose move to other view. Now what I'm going to be able to do is show you both of these so we can kind of do a comparison to see what's going on here. I'm going to cut down the size a little bit so we can see as much as possible on the screen. We both start out by setting a constant, our port number, to 3000. All right, we both require the HTTP module. We both require HTTP dash um, status dash codes. Okay, but here's where it starts to change is on chapter f or line four here as opposed to line four here. In the example that you see on your left here, this is the original example. We call create server. We pass in basically a request and a response. We log that we've received an incoming request. All right, we write out a 200 message, which says all is OK. And we let the user know that the type that we're, of text we're going to be returning is HTML. But the key thing is we're doing everything when we're setting up the app right there. 
I shouldn't say everything, but we're, we're, we're getting the, the, the stuff down. Here, we are calling create server and we're not passing anything. So rather than passing a request and a response like we're doing here, we're passing nothing. But we're telling the server that to act upon when you get, when the server gets a request, all right, and it's got that, basically what it should do is it should come back in and write the OK and set the contact type. It's doing the same thing, but it's just doing it in a little bit different way. That's all. All right. And now that I look at it, there's the reason that we're getting that response. All right. Hello Universe is right there. That, But I'm still not sure why when we're running it for number five, we're getting that response. I thought we'd be getting this will show on the screen, but I'm not seeing that. Either way, we're setting the response message, and here we're telling it to write it out, and then end. Here we're just telling it to end, and I believe it's just automatically going to write that out for us. All right. Then we listen to our port, and we log just exactly the same way that we did before. So it's, for lack of better words, it's kind of two sides of the same coin. The author is showing you two different ways of doing this. All right. So we did this. I did the node main. I went over to localhost 3000 and you saw the message. Again, I did need to go in and reinstall the HTTP minus status minus codes, etc. All right. So the author says it's great to have some content on the screen. But if you want to modify the content based on the type of request, Right now, we're not able to do that. If the user is visiting a contact page, all right, so in other words, that's a get, or submitting a form, which would be a post, as an example, they'll want to see different content on the screen. So the first step, step they say there in determining which HTTP method and URL were in the headers is to determine that stuff. So in the next section, we're going to look at those request attributes. All right. Now, the question here is, what is the name of the function the server calls every time it receives a request? I believe that's our callback, isn't it? And it is. It's also known as an unnamed or an anonymous function. So, let's see where we are here. All right, I'm already at 18 minutes, so rather than going on, I'm going to stop right here. And then I'm going to pick it up on the middle of page 51 with part 5.2 where we go in and talk about analyzing request data. I'll be back with that shortly.